So we come to the Annus Mirabilis, what's generally accepted as the high water mark for rock and pop music, 1967, the year of free love and psychedelia and hate Ashbury and the counterculture, don't trust anyone over 30, Generation Gap, the Summer of Love, Revolution, and stuff like that. So what do you think our friends the Kinks are up to in 1967? The Rolling Stones want to spend the night together with you. The Beatles are taking us on a magical mystery tour. Sid Barrett and company are working on Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And Jimi Hendrix is promising you'll never hear surf music again. Meanwhile, Ray and Dave and company are singing about singing about the joy of having your afternoon cup of tea or the simple pleasures in life such as raking leaves in your yard in autumn and housewives and hair curlers making bacon and eggs for their children and a young couple in love standing on a bridge watching the river flow by not exactly revolution but then again the kinks we're almost always out of sync with the time and that's one of the things that makes them so great so yeah like I said in an earlier video the two times that the kinks were in step with the time just happened to be the two times that they were at the height of their popularity in America at least which was 1964 and the early 80s 1964 their songs you really got me all day and all of the night tired of waiting for you perfectly encapsulated that heady rush of the initial days of the British invasion and summed up the year as well as anybody really early 80s songs like destroyer come dancing don't forget to dance were fit right in with the uh, sound of the new wave music being made at the time and the dawn of MTV which the kinks seem to adapt to better than any of the other 60s bands uh, they really probably went through the 80s better than any of the other 60s bands initially at least anyway so but in 1967 Sgt. Pepper Magical Mystery Tour Satanic Majesty's Request, Love Forever Changes, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Are You Experienced, Doors Debut, Moby Grape, Sounds of San Francisco with the Jefferson Airplane and the Grateful Dead, Sly Stones mixing it up with, with men and women and black and white in his band and helping invent funk music on the, in the process. And there's the kinks who couldn't be more out of step with all of that oh they don't look exactly like they did in 1964 anymore they they have uh, at least pay a little bit of uh, attention enough to put on some run out and buy some psychedelic clothes sorta of, kinda but that wouldn't last long and there's nothing really psychedelic about the kinks music on the face anyway you can make a couple of arguments uh, autumn almanac there's a little bit of back masking back masking backwards guitar and horn in there that could be considered a psychedelic touch even though the songs anything but psychedelic there's a song on here lazy old son has kind of a Really, it's a mournful uh, elegiac in 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 tenor, but it has a bit of a psychedelic haze feel to it, I suppose, if you want to stretch it. Um, it's funny because the the Pink Floyd album, Adam Hart Mother, the one with the cow on it, which is uh, one of my favorites of theirs, but nonetheless, there's two songs on that: Summer '68 and Fat Old Son. If you're a fan of that album, those sound both those songs sound an awful lot like the Kinks, especially 
sound like something that could fit right in on this album, just as a side note. So if you're a fan of Adam Hartmother, you might also be a fan of this. Anyway, something else by the Kinks, 1967. Don't have it on vinyl. Used to. Sold it. Need to get another copy of it one of these days. Have the deluxe edition CD. You got the stereo. You got the mono. You got the uh, 45s that came out around same year. B-sides, demos, alternate takes, some unreleased stuff, and a couple of BBC tracks live on the BBC deals. This is the uh, second album of their golden run, their cream of the crop period from Face to Face in 66 to Arthur in 1970. So you got Face to Face, you got something else, then you got Village Green in 68, and Arthur in 1969, I think I just said 70, but it's 1969. All four of these, in my opinion, are among the best albums ever made. Completely essential. If you love uh, 60s music, and I've said this in every video I've made on the Kinks, but just repeat myself, if you love 60s stuff, especially the British stuff, the Beatles, the Who, the Rolling Stones, Yardbirds, etc., etc., you need this stuff. And if you're a hip-hop fan or a heavy metal fan or... Garth Brooks or Lady Gaga, maybe you don't. I don't know what you'd make of this in that case, but anyone who's a fan of the 60s or just great rock and roll in general, these four albums, like I said, say it again, I said it in another video, not having these four albums is like not having the White Album or Sgt. Pepper or Let It Bleed or The Doors' debut or London Calling. It's just... So, and to reiterate once more, the, the Kinks were still in the period of being banned in America from playing live shows from 1965 to 1969, so they were not able to come over and tour, they weren't able to be on TV in America, over here to promote it or do interviews, so this album went absolutely nowhere in America, which was our loss. It reached, I believe, number 183 on the charts. Oddly enough, it really didn't do anything in England either, although one of the 45s off this album and another 45 that was released, it's not on the album that was released in 67, they both went top five. So the Kinks were still successful as a singles band over there, but their albums were starting to slip down the charts, which is sad because this is a um, like face to face. It's a solid album through and through, and it's as good. As any, I mean, it, it stands up with anything released in 1967, and you all know how great a big year that was. You could go on and on with just naming album after album after album that was great that came out that year. This is one of them. So, <clears throat> not a lot of loud, loud rock and roll. The days of uh, You Really Got Me All Day and All of the Night, and um, uh, Till the End of the Day, are for the moment on hold. The kinks are much more settled down, uh, quiet, almost folky um, band, but that's not a bad thing. In this case, and on these four albums, it's a great thing. So, start off, we've got David Watts, great opener, which is the uh, that punk kid remember in school, the golden boy or the golden girl in school who had everything. They had the looks, their family had the money, they made A's and succeeded at everything they tried effortlessly and you know, you remember that kid. That's who David Watts is. Death of a Clown is a Dave Davies song, though rumor has it Ray had a hand in helping him write it, but probably that's true because it's probably the best Dave Davies song ever and it's um, well Death of a Clown is about a circus it's about a has-been circus uh, the old fortune teller lies dead on the floor nobody needs fortunes told anymore the trainer of insects is crouched on his knees and frantically looking for runaway fleas the, the tigers don't bite and the lions don't roar it's um, and it's a very, uh, sounds like an old gypsy Romanoff 
ballad song. It was a very beautiful song. It's neat too because they wanted strings like harp to open it, but Pi Records didn't rush them into the studio to make albums in those days and didn't give them a big budget, so they couldn't afford to hire someone to come in and do that or go out and buy a harp, I guess. So they, um, Ray, opened a piano and started playing the strings of the piano, and that's what opens that, but it works. So two sisters, and this is the thing, I mean, you've got the Rolling Stones singing about spending the night together and Miss Amanda Jones and, and uh, stuff like that. Two sisters, the sister that's married with the kids that's at home doing the laundry is the hero of the song, and the sister that's out running around having fun is the wayward slattern, which in most songs in 1967 it would have been exactly the opposite. So that's a great song. You've got Situation Vacant, about a guy who's married and then the mother-in-law moves in and messes everyone everything up. <laughs> and Situation Vacant in America, we call it Help Wanted. In England, they call it a Situation Vacant, which I think is cooler. Um, you've got uh, everything on here is a good song. I mean, there's not a bad song on here. The one thing about this is of, of the four albums of this run, all three, except this one, are solid pretty much from start to finish. Arthur and Face to Face don't have a bad song on them. Village Green Preservation Society, the album that comes out after this in 1968, is uh, pretty solid from start to finish. This one has some beautiful, magnificent, wonderful, some of the best songs ever written on it, but it all also has some songs that at first couple of listens feel like filler good filler though, but filler nonetheless, but don't be so quick to judge because this is an album that will sneak up on you. I've had this album, got it on vinyl back in 1980 and I sold it a few years ago unfortunately like I said, so I've had this album for what 34 years. I hadn't listened to it and it's been quite a while since I'd really listened to it, so I pulled this out, it's a new last few days I've been playing it because I wanted to do the review so I wanted to re-familiarize myself with it and um, you know I remembered all the songs because I've heard it it's just been a while and the big songs of course I know but I was playing through it and I thought well you know some of these songs on here they're just they're nice but they're just okay but then I played it again and I played it in the last three or four days I've listened to this uh, probably nine or ten times and after you hear them a few times, they really start to grow on you. And it, what some of the songs that at first sound like they're just so-so really do grow on you. But then there's some of them that reach out and grab you right away. I mean, Waterloo Sunset is, uh, you hear about achingly beautiful songs like God Only Knows or In My Life by the Beatles or For No One by the Beatles, uh, things like that. This is uh, Waterloo Sunset. It's about, this is the couple in love, standing on the bridge looking at the river, and from another perspective, Ray Davies, I suppose, standing there by himself looking at the river on the other side of the way there. Uh, one of the most achingly beautiful and poignant songs that I've ever heard in my life, and it's uh, every bit as good as You Really Got Me. Nowhere near as raucous, but it's... Uh, it's uh this this might be their best song, I would say, except for I actually like the forty five better, which was Autumn Almanac, which is just um the joys of simple pleasures of life, roast beef on Sunday, raking leaves, seeing a caterpillar in your yard. Sounds really dull, but it's uh anything but and I, I would love to play some of these song clips for you. But I got tagged last time on the face-to-face -face review, so I can't. So I would just urge you to go to YouTube and look up Waterloo Sunset by the Kinks and Autumn Almanac and give a listen, see if it's your thing. Two of the greatest songs ever written, in my opinion, and a stand-up to anything that came out in 67 or the 60s to anybody, really. So you've got... Um, and the psychedelia, like I said, they, they, they had the clothes, or they, at least they looked a little different than they did in 64 in the British Invasion early days. But 
there's a there's a little bit of backwards masking in uh, in Autumn Almanac, a little backwards guitar and trumpet at the end there that I guess you could call psychedelic, but the song's not psychedelic in any way. It's a great song, but it's not psychedelic. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, uh, Lazy Old Sun is kind of a hazy feel to it, so I guess you could call that psychedelic. There's a lot of um, kind of mournful regret. There's a lot of uh, nostalgia and reminiscence and Ray Davies, this little episodic social commentary looking at these different people's lives. It's not really, I guess it's a concept album of him just little taking people and writing little songs about their lives. But there's, it's not a rock opera or anything like that. It's, it's, uh, but it's very astute and uh, great lyrics, great music. Um, you have um, on the extras on here, you've got a thing called Good Luck Charm, which is actually not a kink song. It's an old song. I don't know how old, but it sounds like something from the 20s or 30s. It's kind of a neat song. Uh, Susanna's Still Alive and Mr. Pleasant are some 45s that came out around that time. Susanna Still Alive is another Dave Davies number. Act Nice and Gentle is a uh, B-side, I think, to, I don't know what, uh, maybe Waterloo Sunset. Really great B-side. It's a shame it wasn't on the album proper. Death of a Clown, like I said, is great. Uh, there's, there's not a bad song on here, but the highlights, David Watts, Death of a Clown, Two Sisters, Waterloo Sunset, Lazy Old Son, Love Me Till the Sun Shines, Situation Vacant. The other songs, like I said, the first time you hear them, you might be kind of underwhelmed by them, but give them another spin or two, and I'm pretty sure they're going to grow on you. So this one is another 10 out of 10. It's, um, it's a shame this wasn't a huge hit in America and England, for that matter. It's gone up in, in uh, notoriety some in the 40-some years since it was released, but... Uh, Again, it's one that's not well known in America. Waterloo Sunset and Autumn Almanac, both of which were huge hits in England, didn't do anything at all in America because they weren't here to promote them. So, but check it out and uh, hope everyone has a good Sunday. Last week I told you I was going to finally change out the wall of soul records for something else. Well, I got busy, so... Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well, like I said. There's Otis. He hopes everyone's doing well, too. He's asleep, so he's not too happy about being woken up. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. More kinks to come.